Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial number 6. In this tutorial, we will go in deeper about the animation in Pixel Composer. I already talked about animation in the first tutorial video about the basic of the user interface, but I want to go a little bit deeper. So let me import some image, let's say from Pixel Food from Henry Software. Now first I want to remove the, the border and the shadows. And then I can add transform to the selecting node by using Ctrl T. Then I want to animate the scale values. So to animate the properties, you can click on this icon in the inspector panel. It will make the property and animation, and it will appear in these animation panels. Now I can change to the frame that I want, and then I can change this value, but I'm going to click on this link, which allow me to scale both axes uniformly. Now when I play the animation, it will just play the animation. Let me add a scale. Now that's a very basic of animation, you can use animation to almost every type of properties but some of them will have different interpolation like for example, if you try, try it with text when you try to interpolate like text it's, it's not gonna create a smooth interpolation for you because it doesn't know how so it's just gonna, gonna cut between each word but for more type of values like numbers or colors you can do animation for those properties now when you try to interpolate between colors, it will just use direct interpolation. So maybe the color might not look as pleasing as you want. Like for example, if you want to interpolate between green, not just green and green and red, it just gonna give you this uh sometimes unpleasant colors. If you want to have a better control of how to interpolate colors, I recommend you use like a color creation node, like this HSV colors, and then you remove, remove animation. And then we connect this because now you can animate like only the hue or the saturation it gives you better control of how the color will be interpolated now let's take a look at the animation panels here you will see that it will list out all the nodes that are animating and for each properties it will have an option here which will just remove the animation another thing you can do is you can click on here to navigate to that node now the first button here is the looping option. By default, the looping option will set to hold, which means that the values will just stop. Right? Let's take a look at this transform. When the timeline goes outside of the current keyframe, it's just gonna stop. But if you set it to something something else, like like normal loop here, then the values are gonna loop back. As you can see here, when you're outside of this, right, it's just gonna loop these two keyframes over and over again. So if we set it to like a middle. 15 and then we play animation it's just gonna play animation or loop forever the next mode is the ping pong which instead of just looping in the same pattern it's gonna like reverse the value back back and forth and the next mode which is a latest mode added in version 1.0.9 is a wrap mode you try to wrap the value from the last keyframe back to the first keyframe like in this case where we have the first keyframe of the full scale and the last keyframe being the, the half scale, right? Then around at this area, then it will just interpolate the value back to the first frame. So when you try to play here, it's gonna look like ping pong, right? But if you move the keyframe out, like here, and if you use the ping pong, then as you can see, the ping pong will only start after the last keyframe. So the first, the first one here, it's just gonna do nothing. The animation won't play and then it will start ping pong after the last keyframe but if you set it to wrap then the value will wrap back from the last frame and then go back to the first frame including the part before the first frame as well and this will allow you to play it like the same animation using a different delay like in this example now that's the looping mode the next, two, the next button here, the arrow here is just a way for you to control the, the keyframe to send it to the previous key or the next key at the middle button here, we'll add the keyframe at the current position. And you can add smooth easing between each keyframe by double clicking. And while holding your second click, you drag your mouse out to the left or to the right. right. The further away you drag, the smoother the line will become. Or another way you can add easing is by right clicking. And then you can select ease in to be smooth. And you can also adjust the smoothing by clicking and dragging on the handle as well. And you may see that when you like right clicking on the keyframe, there's also a different type of easing. And this bounce easing can allow you to create a simple bounce animation. It doesn't have a lot of control, but it can be useful in some situation. And if you double click without dragging your mouse, it will just remove the easing. 
Next will be an option to change the animation length. You can see this handle at the end of the timeline. It says adjust animation length. You can click and hold, and then you can just drag your mouse around. It will just change the animation length. But as you can see, when you are changing the animation length, it doesn't change the keyframe. So if you want to stretch, if you want to change the animation length while moving all these keyframes accordingly, so then you can press control, then the two tip will change to a stretch animation. Now when you click on it, you will see that all the keyframes will now be moved when you change the animation length. Another thing in the animation panel is this eye icon here, which says high node outside context. What it means is that when you have a group, like for example, I'm gonna group these two nodes. You can see that when I group these two nodes, the node will still appear in the animation panels with their name being gray out. And this happened because we have this eye, we have this eye icon. It will always show every node in your current project. If you click on it, now you will see that those nodes disappear. It will only show the animating node in the current context. In this case, we have we are in the global context. So when you double click on this group, you will see that the timeline will now change to reflect these two nodes. And the node in global context will disappear. And then the next feature that I added to Pixel Composer is the stacker. When you select multiple nodes, right, you right click on it they are this option called stacker. And when you click on it, you will see that this node change color. If you click on any one of them, like if you click on the first one here, you can move your mouse to the left or to the right, and you will be able to create this like stacker effect to all the keyframe. If you click on like the middle node, then it's gonna use the middle node as the base, and it will stacker all the other nodes. And that's it for the animation tutorial for Pixel Composer. I think that for a lot of tools and panels in Pixel Composer, it can be easily experimented with so in the future video, I might be focusing on creating a how-to video on a specific effect or specific things you can do with Pixel Composer instead. So thanks for watching.